news you can use here today. Um, we're going to talk first about stagflation. Uh, Business Insider came up with an article last, I believe it was uh, Saturday morning. Uh, and the headline is America's being haunted by the ghost of stagflation, which is the brutal combination of stagnant growth and high inflation made the 1970s such a slog. Here's, here's what stagflation is. And I believe we've talked about this. I, I think I mentioned this uh, two or three months ago that we are probably in a stagflationary period. And I now believe that to be the case. And so what, what happens is even though we're having inflation in some aspects of the economy, and it's actually a lot of aspects, we're going to talk about uh, what we call shadow inflation on Thursday's call. But we have both true inflation and shadow inflation going on in all aspects of the economy. In turn, there's a huge amount of uh, hits to the economy. There, there's been a, a larger separation between the haves and the have-nots out there. And there's a lot of people that, as a result of COVID or a result of the slowdown of the economy as a result of COVID, are not enjoying any upside. And so what you've got is the same thing that started in the early 70s when Nixon was president and we had, for example, uh, gas prices and gas shortages. Gas prices increased, gas shortages uh, happened everywhere. And then you also had a lot of people out of work. Um, both in true numbers and in, once again, shadow unemployment. We're going to talk about all the shadow stuff on Thursday. Uh, later on, what happened during the 70s is prices of houses increased, but also interest rates increased. And it got so bad that in 1979, when Jimmy Carter was president, we had 20 plus percent interest rate on home loans. Um, and the prime rate, which was the, the number that based all of the interest rates for all the consumers and the businesses was like 24, 25% at one time. It was really bad. The 1970s economically wiped out everything that was built in the late 40s, 50s, and 60s during that kind of golden era when uh, guys came home from battling the Second World War. Uh, in Korea and built the economy and really expanded the sub suburbs, became a thing and all that kind of stuff. The 70s shut all that stuff down. Crime rose, interest rates increased, buying power decreased. Uh, that's essentially what happens during stagflation. We are entering a period, we're seeing the beginning part of it right now. So what's this going to mean for those of you in the housing industry? Um, same, same thing that happened in the 70s. You, you'll see prices at a relatively higher than normal comparison, in other words, higher than the real value. Uh, fortunately, during the 50s and 60s, the prices of homes were so cheap that by the 70s, by the time they came, houses were worth a lot more. And even when there was a loss in value, a lot of people still had equity. See the same thing happening right now. You'll see interest rates here at some point increase, and you'll see, once again, less people buying houses um, right now, there's a housing shortage. Eventually, within the next 10 years, I predict there'll be a housing glut, especially with some of the new laws that uh, are being passed, like here in California, where it's illegal to build a single family home. You must build a two or three unit instead of just a normal single family because you're wasting that land that could be used to put more people on. So, stagflation is a thing. Uh, expect it to be something similar. We had in the 70s. Now, the big difference is during the 1970s, we didn't have a lot of the hard breaks, hard stops, and the Fed wasn't as controlling and as powerful as it is today. We had up until the Nixon era, we had the gold standard that has that got removed uh, during Nixon's tenure, and we basically got into an era which goes right up to this day of printing the money as we need. Um, so it's an interesting thing. We're going to talk about this a little bit more maybe next week, and I'll give you some updated stats, and you'll see how that actually works in your business. Um, that, that's it for the stagnation front. Now, from a uh, futuristic standpoint, I want to give you guys some sense of how, on top of everything else, uh, you're going to see the government expand during this period of time. Happened in the 70s as well. The 19, early 1970s, there was no environmental protection agency, EPA. There was less than half the number of government 
departments at the federal level and the state level than there is today. And what happens during these periods of stagflation is the government expands. More people go to work for the government. The government's still the largest employer in a lot of states, including here in California. And you have a, an elite class of government employees um, you know, who are become a larger segment of society. And so, you know, there's all kinds of implications uh, economically, societally, and those types of things. But the bottom line is that as government increases, the need to justify their jobs increases as well. And so what happens? They pass regulations and then they hire people to enforce those regulations. So let me tell you about some of the goofy stuff that goes on here in California. This last weekend, our uh, Emperor Newsom, our governor, uh, signed a number of bills. And uh, to start with, uh, let me tell you about, let me get this thing back on screen here, hang on a second. Let me tell you uh, about a couple of the ones that he signed. Uh, hang on one second, there we go. Uh, the first one is they have made it illegal. And these are to take effect anytime from the first of the year coming up to the 1st of January, 2024. Uh, they've made it illegal to have gas powered generators, leaf blowers, lawn mowers, uh, anything small like that that kicks out uh, pollution. Um, they've made that thing illegal. Now, that in and of itself is not bad. You know, we were the forefront here in California on bringing electric cars uh, to the mix. Um, and it's been a, it was a boom for the economy. Tesla is the only car maker who's in the black and doing well. And it's because they decided not to let the Chinese control their chip production. They just found what was available and they rewrote their software to handle it. So t Tesla's way up. Um, and that's, a, you know, every other car you see on the roads here in California seems to be a Tesla. So, you know, that, those are good things, in my opinion. A lot of times those are, those are good things. Some of them, it's like nobody is paying attention. They're not making any sense in this thing. So generators are used here in California because we have a lot of power outages because of the wildfires and because of some weather situations, too hot, climate change, all that kind of stuff, whether it's a real deal or not. You see a lot of these folks uh, buy generators so that when their power goes off, they can keep things going. Uh, now, unfortunately, nobody in Sacramento seemed to figure out that a gas power generator is the only thing you can use when your electricity goes off. So they've made this mandate, you've got to have electric generators, which make no sense to handle an electric shortage. I don't know how they're going to do that, but they'll figure it out, maybe solar or something like that. A uh, second bill that passed uh, and was signed into law is gender neutral toy aisles in big box stores. So you can no longer have just boys' toys and girls' toys, you have to also have a gender neutral section. And it gets as fine as defining colors and suggestive discussions about how you can, you know, describe the toys as being gender neutral. Um, you know, I don't know, if I was Walmart, I'd move out of California, but that's, that's just me. I don't know what these guys are gonna do. That doesn't, I think, take effect until uh, a year or so from now. Um, and the third thing that they're thinking about, and this is, you know, if nothing else, these bureaucrats here are smart. Um, they've been trying to figure out a way to, you know, get people to stop smoking. And they've taken a real world crisis, a real thing that's happening out here. Uh, <clears throat> and they've turned it into an anti-smoking campaign. So... This is not a law yet, but the discussion here in Sacramento is that they're going to be uh, trying to get this across the finish line. And it will make it illegal to use a match or a lighter without benefit of permit. Now, in the farming industry, as you guys know I'm in for years, if you wanted to burn a fire, and typically you'll take your prunings from your almond trees and walnuts and all that, you burn them in the winter. You've always had to have a permit to burn here in California. But because of the wildfires and things like that, they're saying, listen, you can't use matches. It'll be illegal to use a lighter. You can't have a fire. You can't light up a cigarette or anything else unless you go get a permit. And then you've got to notify the government when you plan to use that match or lighter or things like that. Now, I don't know how they'd ever enforce something like that, but 
uh, I would not bet against something like that becoming law. So once again, I only bring up this California stuff so that you guys can see what the future looks like for you in some of these other states. Some of some states will just ignore stuff like this. Other states will just draft behind what California's doing. And either way, uh, it's going to mean a larger government employee class, more regulation, and uh, things like that. Third thing I wanna just bring up briefly here is what's happening to wholesalers across the country. You guys have probably read uh, several states now have outlawed or banned wholesaling. The city of Atlanta, Georgia has gone so far as to call it a predatory. They recently signed, I think it was last week, legislation that made it illegal to even advertise uh, certain ways I don't know exactly what those are. We're digging into the bill, and I'll give you more updates Thursday if I get them. But if you are out soliciting to wholesale a property, you don't intend to buy it with your own cash and rehab it with your own cash, they're going to consider that a criminal act. So, you know, they're going to, they, these regulatory authorities are going to chip away at our industry. A lot of this is at the behest of the National Association of Realtors. They put the talking points, you know, in front of these regulatory bodies. Regulatory bodies are like, yeah, I'll do that because that keeps, gives me a job and it gives me a chance to hire more people and, you know, using printed money to pay everybody. Um, they're going to come after those of us who are independent in our job uh, environment. In other words, you know, everybody at the end of the day, should work for either the government or some multinational corporation. They're trying to discourage a sole proprietor, small businesses, things like that, because that's where the most of the money is. So you tap the people who have most of the money and that enriches the government coffers. But anyway, expect that. To, you're going to see that in other areas. Uh, wholesaling, I think, I would predict within a year or two will be all but extinct as a business model for real estate investors. Um, you know, you, I don't think there'll going to be any effect on what we do in terms of how to do business this way, uh, using seller finance, transactional engineering. In fact, we should see a, a boom and an increase in that. So when I started this business in 1999, there was no such thing as wholesale. It, it had not come about in retail, which is rehab now, or rehab then, was really only done by contractors who had figured out I can buy a beat up home and I can fix it up myself and resell it. Up to then, houses that were not, that were in bad shape were just bought that way by people who lived in them and they would gradually fix them up over a period of time. Uh, there was no wholesale industry and the rehab thing was minuscule compared to where it is today. So uh, expect that to change. Uh, I would, if you have made that the number one focus of your business model, I would encourage you to look at things like transactional engineering, the things we teach uh, as a safe harbor, safe hedge against wholesale. So anyway, sorry.